The next portion of this 2D animation course is gonna be focused in After Effects. I'll be going over some of my favorite techniques and ways that I leverage tools within the software. I'll also cover a complex animation project file that will be available in our school. That way you can plug in your own PNGs or reverse engineer it for more learning. All right, so now we got our Photoshop file. We got everything masked out exactly how we were wanting it. Go ahead and save that open up After Effects and go into File, Import, File, and then we're going to import this uh, Photoshop file right here. Import that. Make sure you got Composition Retain Layer Sizes on. And it's going to throw that in there. And then you'll see here there's a little drop down that we can hit. And if you click on these, you'll notice a little icon up here. It'll show you. Here's where the hands of hand is mapped out or masked out. And then there's the triangle as well. So those are the two layers for this example that we're working with. So we'll go ahead and grab those, bring them down, and we'll hit OK on single composition. Now, as you can see, it's way too big because um, what it's doing is it's taking the original dimensions from the uh, Hamza Han artwork. And, you know, for this example, I'm showing you guys in a 1920 by 1080. So I will resize that a little bit. And let's go ahead and rename them. All right, and then the next step that I would like to do, if you hit P, it's gonna pull up the position where you can adjust that. And then of course we can scroll in. If you hold down control, it's gonna give you a little bit more control of what you're doing here, as far as where you're moving it. That looks pretty close. And you know, for this example, we'll leave that. Now, next thing we're going to do is go to the composition, composition settings, and let's put in a 1920 by 1080 right here. This is going to give the whole composition a 1920 by 1080 layout, and we can take the size down a little bit more. And what I'm going to write about there for our, our animation, and I'll go fit up to 100, that way the full screen is showing right here. Um, and another thing is, is you guys are probably getting the black background right here. If you hit this button right here, the toggle transparency grid, this is going to be showing you what you'll be getting with the alpha channel. So this uh, check, bark, check box grid uh, look back here is showing you what uh, is going to be the alpha channel, meaning that it will have transparency behind the image. That is important with the 2D animation. That's We definitely want some alpha channel. Um, to help with the mixing. So from this point, what I'll do is it depends on what, how you're wanting to animate it, right? You know, so there's a lot of different things you can do here, but let's say that I want to start from the side. I have it start from this top left here and we'll hit a, we'll start a keyframe there. So if you'll notice at zero, it started a keyframe, which means it will start from out here. And then if I go over, let's go, sorry, go back to composition settings, change this to, I think we want everything to at least be around at least 10 seconds. Let's do that. Let's do 10 seconds. And then if you open this up, you can see the rest of it. And this basically just fulfills the image to be showing for the full 10 seconds by me stretching that out. So. Again, we got our hands of hand on the top left. Um, let's say that halfway through, we wanted about right here. So we can grab and go like that. And here's where you can help the trajectory of it. So let's say that we want it around there, halfway through. And then at the very end of the loop, it will be back over here. And again, we'll change that trajectory like that. And as you notice, once I start one keyframe, if I, you know, how I went to the five second mark, I moved it, it started another keyframe automatically. And same thing with um, at the very end, it automatically went and set that keyframe as well. 
So let's go ahead and play that through, see what it looks like. All right, it's pretty slow. So here, here's another trick on what you can do is select all those, hold down Alt and move them in and it will move them all in together. Let's see what a five second, I'm gonna press, I'm gonna go to the end and press in and that is bringing the end of the, um, where, it, where, it, where it's gonna loop, that's where it's gonna render to. So here's with five seconds. I think that's more of the pace that we're looking for. I'm, I'm gonna move it up to about seven and we'll go there. If you hold down shift as you're going in, it will lock in. I'm gonna press in to move that back out. All right, that's a good speed right there. Um, now, what I would do next is go to the rotation, maybe start it at zero. I like to switch back and forth between P as in position and then R as in rotation. So as you see, we got the rotation set at zero. I'm gonna go to where the halfway mark is on the position, lock in there, it goes back to rotation. And then now we can rotate it a little bit. And let's go to the very end of that. In fact, let's try this. Let's see what this looks like. There we go. So that doesn't look too bad. Um, let's see what a little bit more rotation looks like. So there you can see that that's that's what we're looking at. That's not a bad start. Um, I do think the scale could be taken down just slightly. And same thing with the position, the starting position could be taken down just slightly. We don't want it to be leaving the frame, basically. And that, that goes with the bottom too. So I will go ahead and adjust that move that up slightly. And let's see again. There we go. All right, so there's our first in and out um, loop, if you will. And I'm gonna show you guys how to beef that up. So there we go, that's a great start. Now, what I like to do that kind of uh, multiplies the efforts that you're making here, if you will, is put an adjustment layer in. The adjustment layer, whatever it is above is going to affect everything below it. So, I will go ahead and add a mirror. Go up here to your effects, grab the mirror, and drop it on the adjustment layer. And usually uh, your middle points can be 960 by 540 if you're doing a, a 1080 um, composition. So now you can see that I have a mirror that is giving me left and right movement now. So that's gonna help you stay symmetrical and not having to do that over and over and trying to get an exact. So the adjustment layer will definitely help you with a lot of things here. So keep that in mind. Um, another effect that I really like to add on is the echo effect. And let's see how that's looking. So what this is gonna do is give you multiple um, different looks with these hands of hands. There we go. So go to put it on composition in front. Um, and then, you know, you can set this up however you want. I prefer to have just barely any echo on it. it kind of gives it that cool tracer look. So here's what we're looking at with an echo on it. And you can even animate that echo in between. You know, you can you can you can have as many as you want coming out. So here's here's kind of what we're looking at by putting an echo on. And of course, you want to make sure the echo has enough time to exit the the loop, because as you can see right now, um, the echo as this restarts, the echo is still there. So it turns it uh, it is not a seamless loop right now with the way it is set up. Um, so, you know, if that was the case, if I was doing the echo, I would need to give it a little bit more space so that echo could get out of the frame. And right there would be good. The echo back to where I like it, which is normally about right there. So 
So then that means you can go there, press in. It was gonna make it the end. And also I, I've mentioned in, but you can also do B, you know, if you wanna have it start somewhere else. Um, and if you move that out, that will start at the very beginning of your timeline. All right, and then another effect that we could add on is the lens effect. That's a really popular one that I like to use. Um, a lot of my effects that I do use are in the distort section. And you know, from that point, 960 by 540, so it's gonna be centered there. And with the lens, what we could do The lens kind of gives you kind of like a fisheye uh, blur on the outsides that I really like. So we'll go ahead and keep that. And as you guys can see here, we got echo on and we got lens on. All right, so the next thing I'd like to do is animate this triangle eye. And we'll do a different technique so we can see another way to animate it. Uh, let's go to it. And we got the scale around 20. Um, let's go up to the three second mark. We'll set a time frame there. I'm going to go back to the beginning, put it on zero. And now, as you can see, you have it coming in. Let's go ahead and mark the position there as well. Put a keyframe at the three second mark. Now, from this point, let's move it forward and drag this guy up here a little bit of trajectory. So you got him coming in and then going up to the top. Now what I'm gonna do now is let's set a keyframe on the rotation. Go to the end and let's do like a 240. I don't want too much rotation. All right, that seems good. And Let's go ahead and start another adjustment layer. Adjustment layer triangle. Now, let's grab a mirror. Let's throw that mirror on top of that. Remember 960, since we're working by it with a 1080 composition. And there, now you can see we got two of them splitting off. All right, so now we got the eye coming in and it's splitting off to the top with a rotation. Let's see how it looks with another mirror on here. Remember 960. And let's put on like a 90 degree. Let's see what that does. So now we got four. Um, the only issue is, is that we don't want it quadded out like that with a quad mirror. Um, until it starts splitting like right there. So what we could do is go to the mirror and in every effect, you're gonna have a composition options, effect opacity. And you know, we want it at 100 right there, but maybe before it splits right here at three seconds, maybe we want it at zero. And let's do that to both of them and see how that looks. So again, 100. Move it back a couple frames down to zero. And then now you see we have our original image and then it's gonna split, boom, into four. All right, so there's a look on a way we could do that. Now, as we mentioned before, let's add the echo in. And in front, how many echoes do we want? And here's another cool thing with Echo is you can add on Decay. I feel like that kind of gives it that fade out on the trail, which can be really neat. We're getting something right there. I don't know what's going on there. Okay, right here, the opacity is at seven for some reason. There we go, now it's at zero. So that disappeared. So there you go. Now we took one triangle rotation that went up here and mirrored that out and made four different ones. So again, just kind of 
shining a light on the importance of adding in mirrors and effects and stuff like that, where you can really beef up your animation. So one thing I did want to touch on is sometimes the renders can get really heavy, especially when you start doing multiple echoes, you have uh, high resolution files you're working with, etc. You know, you get multiple layers in there. There's so many things that can start to be really resource intensive on your computer. And if that's the case, if it's if it's just crawling in the preview, you have an option over here where it's in full resolution right now, which is great for previewing. But if, if it's just in the preview state and it's crawling, you can turn it down to a quarter resolution and it's just going to it's more likely to be in real time animation. Um, and it's just going to give you a quarter of the res resolution. So, you know, it is going to be a little bit noisy or grainy or what have you. But if the point is just seeing, um, you know, your, your lines of animation and your trajectories and stuff like that, feel free to change this. You can even customize it um, to show you whatever preview you want. And then, you know, we got the alpha over here. We also have our proportional grid. So these green lines right here are really going to help you um, stay proportional and yeah, be able to get centered and just all those things. Um, this tile action I have found is good for video, um, you know, recording videos like this or podcast or anything like that kind of helps you keep centered in uh, the rules of third. So one thing I do want to go over real quick is one of the more complex animations I've done with the Hamza hand. Um, and it's basically just taking the technique that we've gone over and stacking those on top of each other. So I'd like to show you the breakdown of this. Um, as we can see here, this is a pre-comp, pre-composition. And what that is, is a group of layers that you're basically grouping together. And if I click into here, you can see that I have two different Hamza hands. And you can also see the animation that they go on. And up here on the adjustment layer, I have a mirror like we went over and I also have an echo like we went over. All right, so that's one layer like you see there. Now if I go back out here to my main composition, we'll go ahead and solo this next one so you can see. All right, so we got a cross there. Let's go into the pre-comp and I'll show you guys the animation that it's doing. So we got a rotation and they all cross in the center and go out. Now, we will look at this guy right here. Turn on that adjustment layer with him. So this adjustment layer has a mirror on it and an echo as well. And you can see that they do this movement. I'll go into here and as you can see, this is only one Hamza hand that we're animating up in the corner. And then by utilizing the leverage of an adjustment layer with a mirror on it. And then on that, on that pre-composition, we have another mirror on it with a 90 degree angle, like we've shown in the other example. And that's what's given this one Hamza hand four different looks, or four different, uh, four total hands on it. And that is a different animation that uh, I'll show an example of later. So that gives you guys an idea of how we can create a complex animation like this with not too much um, animating. It's it's more of utilizing effects and adjustment layers and stuff like that. So there's a behind the scenes on one of the ways that you can start stacking these techniques and building some of your own complex animations. All right, so I think that wraps up the After Effects portion of this. The next step is to send these animations over to Adobe Media Encoder. We'll render them out with the alpha channels and then we'll send them over to Resolum. I'll give you guys some techniques on how I like to mix them, some different effects that we can use to get a lot of different looks, and yeah, let's keep moving.